Hey, this is Glendon, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu, where we're all about making that money without a job. Yes, I'm at the virtual beach. Some of them try. It may go a little weird. It might get a lot weird. Let's see if we can adjust that. Bring it back a little bit. All right. That's a little bit better. It's a little weird. Ghost effect, but I like it. We're going to roll with it. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Tonight, uh, 11 p.m., 11.59 p.m., this offer ends 26 business courses, 90% 90, 90 off, plus a one-hour consult with me, plus access to the new thing that's coming. It's all there below the video. Grab it before 11.59 p.m. tonight. All right. <clears throat> we had some technical difficulties, but we continue to roll through that stuff because that's what we do as business people. All right. Let me give it to you. There's a few events that happened and, you know, people were talking some stuff because I did a stream earlier today talking about why I'm not going to buy a MacBook Pro, right? And it went on a tangent because people started talking with the Apple versus Android, Apple versus PC, and that really wasn't the deal. That wasn't even relevant to what was going down. I mean, it was. I guess it was relevant because I did the uh, video, but the whole point is how a business can lose its way. And it got me thinking because people immediately went to what they were comfortable with because in the video, I even said, you know, if I wasn't doing video, I wouldn't have all these Apple machines. I just wouldn't. But that kind of got lost into cost analysis. Then it was this other stuff like, you know, you're not tech savvy. I built a million dollar business on YouTube using tech, but I'm not tech savvy. And I was like, OK, that's a new one. And I started to think. We need to get a little deeper. We need to get a lot deeper into this. I mean much much deeper so what we're going to talk about tonight is that fast dollar or that slow 100 dollars now we will give you some new lingo here for this conversation average lifetime value of a customer now you may have never heard this term before you may not even know what it means so i'm going to break it down to you when i was in when i had my physical business Average customer was worth about 500 bucks a year for us. 500 bucks per year. And that was a lot of the dollar people. But, you know, we had some people who would spend 500 bucks a month. But per the head count, because I used to keep track of all this stuff, was averaging 500 bucks per year. Now, why is this number important? When you know that kind of number, so you just like, wow, we get a thousand customers. It's 500,000. Real simple math. Uh, you know what? Let me pull out the calculator because we have these nerds who come on time like, oh God, you were off by a decimal. Your information's invalid. So we'll use the trusty calculator, even though I think it's going to be, yep, 500,000. So if we get 2,000 customers, that's a million dollars. Now, if you're not looking at this stuff, probably is because you may not have a business where you can get this kind of action or have these kind of numbers. And it's, it's really strange how so many people are missing this. Now, every business doesn't lend itself where you're going to have customers with an average lifetime value. I mean, let's take Craigslist. Unless you have a product that the customer is going to consistently come to you and buy over and over again, it's really hard to get that kind of value. Now, this is where the slow $100 come in because let's say typical Craigslist sale, typical garage sale sale, that's going to be that fast dollar. You buy some stuff, you flip it, but you don't get lifetime value of a customer. Now, why is this important? Well, let's just do this, okay? We already did the math. For us, it was $500 per year. So first year, you get 1,000 customers. That's half a million. 
Second year, you get another thousand customers. That's a million. The third year, you get another thousand customers. That's 1.5 million. The fourth year, you get 2,000 customers. You know, so by having average lifetime value in the situation where you can serve that customer over and over again without having to reload, without having to consistently start from scratch each and every time, you put yourself in a position to get wealthy slowly. Now, most people are caught up on that fast dollar. Now, what does this have to do with the earlier stream uh, in terms of talking about computers? Okay, here's another thing with that slow 100 bucks. Reliability. If you have a business and you have mission critical stuff like this stream, my computer equipment is reliable, right? But the YouTube interface where you go with the live things, sometimes it works. It hasn't worked for me for like two weeks. And my internet's crazy fast. Uh, so it's not on my end. And let's just say the only way that I can stream was that way. I can stream. So typically when you spend a lot of money, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and walk you through what I did. You don't have to do this, but this is what I did. I got computers that were reliable because I was going to put out a ton of content. So I didn't want anything to disrupt my content train. Uh, this iMac over here has probably done 1500 videos. Well, between the iMac and the MacBook Pro. So consistently, I've been able to make content year after year after year after year with no interruptions and being, you know, since this is how I make my money. I have backups in case something happened. Now, why is that important? When, you know, because I've looked into building, quote, a gaming computer and all this other stuff. And one of the things that cropped up over and over again is that they break. You build them, something happens. You buy them brand new, something happens. Usually you can fix it. But from what I understand and what I've experienced, those other machines aren't as reliable as this, even though they may be more have more tech. Now, from a mission critical standpoint of average lifetime customer value, you don't want to be missing any beats. You don't want to be half stepping. You don't want to have days where you can't produce. When you go to your favorite coffee shop or you go to your favorite restaurant and they don't have what you want, or the coffee machine's broken, or the milkshake, milkshake machine's broken. Do you really care that it's broken? You care about, you had that thirst in your mouth for a milkshake or some coffee and you can't get it. And you're disappointed. So disappointed, you might not go back to that restaurant, which disrupts your average lifetime value for that establishment. Now, this is the slow $100. Um, it's very easy to make that first, that fast dollar. Go out and buy some cheap, flip it. But here's the problem with that business model is you're always reloading. You're always reloading. And unless you scale and get staff, you're all you're caught in this perpetual uh, hamster wheel where you're just running, 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 running. You might be making good money. But the minute that you step off that hamster wheel, your money stops. So you don't even get to average lifetime value of a customer. You don't get into year after year growth. You don't, there's a lot of things that you just don't get into because that's the difference between hustling and actually setting up a business that can make money when you're not around. Now, my business, you know, a lot of people are interested. Right now, my business is in hustle mode. I have four streams of income from this channel. A lot of people, every day I make sales. There's the everyday sales to the Goober store, not the Goober store, but the Gumroad store, um, that adds up to more than my AdSense. It's passive income. And then there's AdSense. And then there's me doing streams, which gets a different ad. And then there's the selling of products, which makes the most money. Now, if you are wanting to escape the fast dollar world, there's a sacrifice. 
And that's going to be problematic because like right now, I'm reformatting this channel. So there's a sacrifice because I've lost a lot of subscribers, which is cool. And but the people who are coming back and replacing them are better subscribers, which will fit into this average lifetime value of a customer. Because typically for me with the information product business, my average lifetime customer value is about eighteen hundred. There are people who bought every book, every course, signed up for everything, and in the future will continue to do this. Now, you capture those customers, then you get more, then you keep those customers, and you get more. That's how you grow. So the fast dollar business, which can you can make a million dollars fast, you know, fast dollar. You can make a million bucks a year, but you are working incredibly hard incredibly long and the minute that something happens to you your money stops there's a lot of that going on so i would suggest that if you're in that fast dollar mode use that to support yourself use that to put together some reserves where you can start building a business model that is on that slow 100 dollar tip because if you don't and I can tell you, something's going to happen sooner or later. I've had one event where we had to shut down the business. You know, we both got sick. We had to shut it down. It was, it was a done deal. We couldn't do it. We didn't build it right. We didn't hire managers. We didn't hire people to buy stuff. So when we got sick, there was no more business. And it was pretty brutal. Then I had a situation where I got sick and almost died with this business. And I was in the hospital. It took me six months to recover. A lot of y'all didn't know it because I would put myself together to do a video. And I didn't talk about it until years after it was over. But because this business model operates on average lifetime value of a customer, it has a lot of automation, I made more money while I was sick. I made more money while I was sick. Then there was when my partner passed, I was pretty heartbroken and I didn't really do shit for six months. I put up, you know, I put up a video once a week or every two weeks and that went on for six months. My money continued to come in because it was built differently and it wasn't built on the fast dollar business model or what you can call uh, flipping and turning for information products would be like a launch. Google these names. Marie Folio. Marie Folio has been online a long, long time. She has one product, B School, that I know of. I think she has coaching and some other stuff. But her B School, that's the big thing. And it launches every year. She has a, a few partners. And that's her product. And she, every year, every year, year out, through all the years, she puts out content. You know, she does what she does. And then she makes millions of dollars in this really short period of time. And that's the launch model. I don't like the launch model. I've done many launches and none of them have been million dollar launches. The best one was over 300 grand in like six weeks. And that was pretty organic. I didn't use paid traffic, but typically my launches were like 2000, 5000, 40 and like 70. But the majority of the income that is derived from this channel comes from an evergreen model and the selling year round and every day of products. So that's where it makes most of the money. And that's why I have to build in automation. But many people who are in quote, fast dollar mode are not looking at the intricacies of the slow $100. Not paying any attention to it because they're just hustling, 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 hustling. So that is something that's really, really important. Let's see, we got a few people in the chat room. What's up, visual input, peace, Uberman 2010. I made a lot of money on storage auctions. This guy's know what he's talking about. Listen to him, appreciate it. Uh, H Father, I need this because I'm broke. <laughs> uh, can you, Heron, can you give an example of a fast dollar business? Reselling, selling on Craigslist, uh, service business, cutting grass, laundry, uh, not laundry, but um, maids, yeah, housekeeping, car wash. Those are fast dollar businesses, but properly managed, they can also become the slow 100. 
So anything that you can do, you know, look, here's the straight thing. Here's my advice to you. Since you say you're broke, pick a service business that you can stomach. Not necessarily one that you like or one that you're in love with, but one you can stomach and do well. Service businesses for people who are broke, who have no capital, who have no help, is one of the fastest ways to turn your income situation around. Uberman 2010 put into action with Glenn in the saying that you won't be broke. I mean, seriously, uh, every day I get emails from people. Uh, there's uh, Melissa V. She's on here. She listens to the channel. She, she's made maybe, you know, gotten up to like 200 bucks a month just listening from the ch listening to the channel. Uh, go watch the video, How to Start a Service Business. It's on this channel, How to Start a Service Business. Go to the channel page. Plug that in and watch that video like 10 times. Black Tube, I'm trying to make money fast. What's up, bro? I've only got 200 bucks. Get a service business. Uh, Cody Weinman Composer. I have a music transcription service that's starting plus freelancing. They are indeed fast. Great info. I mean, if you're broke, you can't be really picky about your business model. And then you got to kind of you know, and there's another video I have here on the channel, uh, the five checking accounts you need for a business. Check that one out because that's going to help you position your money. Let's see. Say you want to start an online service business with little money. How do you go about doing that? Hair and father, you actually don't. Here, here's the truth. And this, this fits very well into this conversation. Good uh, suggestion. It takes time or money for you to grow an online business fast. Well, not even fast. It takes time. This channel, I didn't make any money after three months of working every day, making videos, writing every day. I didn't make a dime for three months. And this was my full-time gig. But once again, full disclosure, after we liquidated all these you know, stuff in the warehouses, I had 300 grand in the bank. So I had money to live on, plus there was some other stuff going on. I still had the Cougar Ranch. So I had reserves, and I put myself on a $1,500 per month budget and gave myself two years to make this work. So that was how that worked. So I didn't just start this with no money. I didn't start this. I didn't have a car payment. I wasn't sleeping on my best friend's sofa. I had money in the bank, and I had, more importantly, business information, business training, business skill sets. Uh, Adrian Edwards, delivers a good business to get into. Yes, that's another fast dollar business. Uh, Elder, Will Elder Williams, the five checking accounts video was awesome. Helps so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, ch check those videos out because here's one of the things that's then a lot of people get pissed off because it's true. Amazon is a fast dollar business. Fast dollar business. Um, Craigslist is a fast dollar business. Offer up, fast dollar business. Uh, Facebook selling groups, fast dollar business. And the reason is you don't develop email lists, you don't develop customer lists, you don't develop CRM, that's customer relationship management uh, system. You There's so many things that literally you are leaving hundreds of dollars, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of dollars in some cases on the table. All right, H. Fathers, this is the thing. Here's the template for someone in your situation. You say you're dead broke, right? Start a service business and completely forget about online businesses for six months. What you should be doing is getting your cash flow up. If you know you have no money, either you're living with somebody or you're about to get evicted, get that shit straight and then <clears throat> pick something online that you can do. Explain how to avoid car payments and stupid the debt to make it to your level. Let's see. How can I explain that? All right, I had some very unique situations that I think I need to make y'all clear about because after I went through my bullshit phase, which was, you know, 97, 98, 99, I got a really good job. Really, really good job. So from that job, I networked into another job that paid more money. So I didn't go off onto my own until I started JC Solutions 
which was selling the office furniture for a customer I wanted to sell new furniture to. And then she was just like, hey, if you want to sell this new furniture, you got to help us out and sell this used furniture. So that was the beginning of GC Solutions. But I had a job. And when I went full time with my business, I had money in the bank and I didn't have a lot of obligations. So I didn't come from ashy to classy. It, it was like this. You know, it, it wasn't like it was steps, right? It was steps. That's how I did it. So it took time. It took years. It took years, man. So there was no ashy class. It wasn't like that. Let's see. So when I got some money, I actually bought my first car cash because I had a really high paying job. I mean, seriously. I took a few checks and I was able to buy a car. So that's not normal. And I'm not going to present it like it's normal. It kind of blew my mind because I was like a crackhead. Like, woo, I did that. Let's see. Diana Thompson, we know about leaving money on the table. What's up, Clayton Coulterville? Uh, uh, Cody Wyman, composer. As a composer, I can echo, echo what Glennon is saying about making no money for a few months. That's what happens when you start out. Or, you know, you get to a larger enterprise, it could be a year where you the business is bringing in revenue, but you're not really making money. You're not making profit. <laughs> Ismail Muhammad, be a cash buyer. Joe Esparella, grind for life. Let's say you're a fast dollar person, right? Say you're caught up in fast dollar world. What you should do is first, balance out and what's balancing out is get enough money like let's say your monthly obligations are 2500 bucks a month balancing out is making five grand you got 2500 to pay your bills then you got another 2500 to bank and stack that should be your first priority because here's the thing you're desperate for money and you go out and try to sell people stuff they will smell it like you dogs like smell fear it's just not a good situation. So balance out, get yourself leveled out where you can breathe and where you can sit down and actually contemplate business concepts and ideals. Now, after that, and while you're in fast dollar world, you shouldn't have a car payment. Let's just say, say your car payment's 450, right? That's someone asked you, it's like, what's your car payment? And you're like 450, all right? Let's say your insurance is 125. And so that puts you at 575. And then gas is 250 a month. That's pretty average in most places. So your car is costing you 825 per month. And let's say you make $2,000 a month after taxes. Almost half your money is going for the purchasing and maintenance of your car. By getting a hoopty, you can get rid of $575 of that. The only thing you're doing is paying liability insurance and gas. $575 from a $2,500 a month budget is huge. It's 20%. So that's one of the reasons you don't need a car note if you're in hustle mode. I was homeless, dude. <laughs> what motivates you in the beginning when times were tough? I was fucking homeless. I can't speak to anyone else, but it was in a bad situation living in a place with crackheads, living in the west end of Atlanta, which was a real shitty neighborhood back then. I, I don't live over there anymore. I can't speak to how it is now, but to give you an example of how shitty the neighborhood was, I was sitting on the front stoop one night, just as it was getting dark. And this girl who was cracked out, had a gun and she was walking down the street and I sat there and I held my breath because I didn't want her to be startled and swing around and shoot me. And she just literally went around the corner shooting into the ground until her gun was the clip was empty. That was the neighborhood I lived in. Uh, another thing we were one of me and the rooming house dudes were watching television. Then there was this bam, 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 bam on the door, right? Well, it's Atlanta PD. He opens up the door. Cop puts a gun straight to his head. Another cop runs up. Nah, they ain't them. No apology, none. They go off. That was the motivation for me. 
Um, Broderick, how do you back out of a car that you bought? You sell it. <laughs> That's pretty much the only way you can get out of it. Uh, JC Sanchez with a sick background. Yeah, I'm playing around with new stuff. But that that's the whole thing. If you're in that fast dollar boat, and see, this kind of goes back to the conversation with the previous one, like, well, I'm not buying a MacBook. A few people kind of went and just hopped all over the back and then turned it into this Mac versus PC conversation, build a gaming computer, build a Hackintosh and all this other stuff. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, on this table, 3,400, 1,200, this was 1800 so three, six. Everything on this table, including the cameras, let's just say 10 grand, right? 10 Gs. This channel has made millions of dollars. So 10 Gs, millions of dollars. Also, I go buy it, I pull out the box, it works. Now, let's say with the Hackintosh and building these things, Let's say, I don't know how long it takes because I looked at it and the reason I didn't do it was common issue was these suckers broke. And it is very frustrating when you've got something to do and before you can do what you need to do, you got to fix your shit. I didn't want to go through it. And to me, just my experience, and this isn't something you have to do, but to me, every piece of equipment on this table was worth its weight in gold for me because it allowed me to keep a consistent process of marketing and videos, which fueled everything else. So that's how that went. And typically, let's just keep it real. When you have to buy stuff on the low low or you have to buy stuff super cheap or you have to do it yourself, and not always, but most of the time, because I used to be there, your ass is fucking broke or you don't have any money. That's why you're doing it. If you had the option of spending your whole weekend fixing your car and you don't love fixing cars you don't like tuning your car and let's say 12 hours in the garage or hanging out with your family and you got the money where you can pay for it to be fixed and nothing goes bad would you want to be in that garage for 12 hours on the weekend and go to work for 40 or 50 hours the next week come on let's be real about that uh, no money does not provide happiness but it sure does solve a lot of fucking problems so typically I'm just kind of putting this out there because if you stay in the fast dollar business models, um, you may never get out of it. And I'm going to give you an example of some of my friends who are still in the storage auction business and who were already older when I started, who are their health's declining. It's very physical. And they don't have, they never built anything. They don't have people hired. They don't have managers. So they buy what they can and their income has gone down because their health has gone down. That is rough. It's really, really rough. So if you are about that money, do this. Fast money, fast dollar business, and sit down and you know, take a sheet of paper and be like, hey, I'm going to do this fast dollar business for a year. And let's be realistic because you got to balance out and you might need to buy a car. You can hustle up enough money to get you a good used car. And this is one of the things about living in these times. Good cars, a car with 200,000 miles on it, for some of these models, that's nothing. A car would do another 200,000 with very little maintenance. That, that would be your Hondas, that'd be your Toyotas, that will be some of your older BMWs. Um, you can get a lot of car for two to $5,000. And I'm talking about something that looks nice, air works, and is mechanically sound. We, and you can get a lot of stuff. So you can actually, for a while, I drove a 1995 BMW 525i, which when I got to it, it was painted. It had new rims and all the seats and stuff was paired, and it looked very classic. And I had people trying to buy it all the time. Uh, Uberman, how did you deal with the backstabbing culture when you did car sales to get your money or stay on the road to independent success, sales success? Um, I moved to Highline. I was in domestic and I got into Highline, which was totally different. 
Uh, we weren't open on Sundays. We closed at six on Saturdays. <laughs> shit was totally different. Whereas with domestic, it was bell to bell, like nine to nine or 10. Are you on there all crazy hours? So it, it gets to be really, really, it was rough. Um, I enjoyed my time in car sales, but some I would never want to do again. Never want to do that again. Not like I was doing it before. I mean, it, it's just really, really rough. But for you guys who are in that fast hustle mode, you're going to have to put together some discipline. Go to the five business checking accounts that you need. It's on this channel. Just go to the channel page, hit that little search bar and check that out. And once you start making money, you're going to have to learn how to save. I know all of the financial people say make it automatic. Don't see it. Don't miss it. But if you want to change your life circumstances, you're going to have to grow the fuck up and save your money and partition your partition your money, which means you're in that fast dollar mode, right? And you are getting 500 bucks a week. You can't party. You got to take 100 bucks, 125, that goes straight to a savings account, whether you want to or not. You pay your bills, uh, go to the grocery store, get lunch meat, spaghetti sauce, whatever, eat most of your meals at home. And then that's what's going to allow you to move because see, there's two things that's happening. You're stacking up money and you're stacking up discipline, which will help you out tremendously in the business world. Now, for you folks who want to move to the slow dollar thing, that, that's the whole thing is you've got to get into the point of picking business models that you can get repeat customers. Macy's. In my life, I probably have spent $50,000 in Macy's, if not more. I remember getting out of the military and I had this credit card with this huge limit. Went ahead and got all the bedroom furniture. I know that was like 12 grand. I know I probably, you know, I know it was. 12, 15, and then probably Macy's has gotten 50, if not 70 grand out of me over the years. And I haven't been in there really hard in maybe the last 15. <laughs> so Macy's has, you know, they, they have their data where they can go like, well, we get someone in here, we're going to get X amount of dollars out of them over the lifetime of that customer relationship. So you got to have business models. Restaurants can have those kind of business models. Uh, those kind of numbers. There's a lot of businesses. Uh, let's see, Jay said, I just want to say thank you and let you know that I was doing eBay, but, but I left it about a year ago. I'm so glad I listened to your advice because eBay went down now to a service business. For all you guys who are broke, service business. Car wash, lawn service, delivery service, a combination of Uber and something else to get yourself balanced out. Uh, Brandon Gregory, the West End is gentrified now and is low key Poppington. You should move back. Mm, probably not. I live near Chastain Park. I'm probably not going to go. No, 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 probably not. Because another thing is, I know it's going to sound crazy. Everybody and their mama delivers over here. It's ridiculous. I mean, literally, it's like 150 restaurants that deliver or they have these apps. Uh, Cody, yep, start saving three months ago and just have over a thousand bucks. Because if you don't have resources, you got to have a savings account. That's one of the things that's in that video, the five business checking accounts you need. Wow, a car payment, 450. That's nothing. You got people walking around with seven hundred and nine hundred and one thousand dollars car payments. Today, serious, for real, for real. I don't know when the last time you bought a car, but um, it can get up there. And these are not luxury. Well, I guess the 700, 800, 900, those would be luxury vehicles. But you could be paying 500 bucks in, you know, between three something and five something for a Chevy or a Toyota. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. All right, let's see. Uh, there's only a few more hours below the video. And I am going to put it, well, I'm going to try to put it here. Nope. It's, let's see, will that work?
Hold on a second. I'm going to try to put it in. I figured it would take me out of the chat. But I'm going to put the Cyber Monday sale into the comments section. Once this all flows back the way it should. Give me a second. Let's see. You get 26 business courses. It went through. Awesome. An hour consult with me and you get to be in on a new thing. It's a G just to let you know. So don't, you know, if you don't have a thousand dollars, you can't do it. Don't worry about it. But that's what the cost is. Uh, yeah, I know someone who makes a $700 car payment working a nine to five. I mean, you factor in what the insurance is. Let's say they have tickets that could be paying 250, 300 bucks a month insurance. The car payments are 700 gas. That's 1200 bucks just for the car. Happens all the time. All of the time. Now, some other stuff is for you to get into the evergreen thing. Because like I said, I know a lot of people who do product launches. That's a very common business model. And it makes a lot of money. I know someone, she did $1.2 million on her launch in four months. And the year before, she did like 90000 So she really, you know, I mean, you got people making a lot of money, but she, you know, spent about 40 Gs on Facebook ads as well. Uh, mothers, I tip my Amazon Prime, Prime Now and Prime Fresh drivers $20 every time they hook, they hook me up. I hook them up. It's win-win. What are you talking about, Mother's Mustache? <laughs> How are they hooking you up? What am I missing here? Go ahead and drop that in the comments because I am curious to what, what's going on with that. Let's see. So there's some other stuff, but it's really the business model. Let's like YouTube. Let's say you got in years ago and did beauty vlogging. You were an attractive girl. You got in early and you were really, really consistent. Some of those girls are making $150,000, $300,000 a month. And they're still in high school. It's the market. The market is so huge and there are so many segments. And, you know, that's a business model. Cosmetics, makeup, hair that you can get to the average lifetime value of a customer. And that's very important if you're going to do paid traffic. Because let's say, because right now this month, I'm doing absolutely no paid traffic whatsoever. Everything I'm doing is straight through these live streams. And it is really amazing how well it's working. What we got here, Elder Williams, I work at a Cadillac dealership. It's amazing how many customers drive a 50 plus, 50K plus car and can't replace a $300 tire. I'm going to read that again because I know this to be true. I'm going to tell you a little story in a minute. This is Elder Williams. I work at a Cadillac dealership. It's amazing how many customers drive a $50,000 plus car and can't replace a $300 tire. I used to have a BMW X5 4.8. I bought four new tires. Guess how much those tires cost? Four brand new tires. Um, just take a wild guess. I knew what it was, and I went to Tire Rack. I bought them on sale, and I held on to them because I knew my tires were going to need to be replaced. But even with that, just take a wild guess how much four tires were for a BMW X5 4.8. Let's see. Mothers, I'm busy. They save me from having to stop when I'm doing I feel like they're my assistant. Oh, okay, they're doing more for you. I pay cash for my cars, no car payments. JC Sanchez, 1600 Nope. Stephanie Williams, 4000 Too much. Aaron Father, one k Not enough. Uh, Uberman, good. Avoid drive time at all costs. Franco, 1500 Elder Williams, 900 Reginald Brown, 22000 $2, Close. Uberman, drive time. Naso, I say close. 2400 bucks. Uh, the tires on the X5 are staggered where the wheels in the back are bigger than the wheels in the front. So you can't rotate them. 2400 bucks, four tires. 
and they were run flat at least, you know, because that was the thing. So yeah, twenty four hundred bucks for tires. Um, if you drive those luxury cars, I mean, you need to keep about two to three grand in the bank for repairs. I knew what I was getting into, and I just prepared. Um, <laughs> but what you said, because also, um, like my car now, the Audi, the tires are just much less because I bought four pair and they were eight hundred bucks. But it was kind of close. But I got them on, um, I got them on sale. And it could have easily been that, that 300 bucks that Elder was talking about. These low profiles are no joke, the, especially the ones that actually don't hydroplane. You can get some cheap low, pro, low profiles, and you can also find your ass hydroplaning on the highway. Uh, run flats rule. JC Sanchez, this is a good idea to buy 20K, 20K car cash. Depends on how much money you got. Franco, my car is worth fifteen hundred, and my life and insurance cost me a thousand a year. It's the cost of doing business, man. It's just the cost of doing business. So you know, it's really up to you to pick what you want. Like I said, it's it's a personal decision for me. I am not a big fan of launches. I just like selling consistently. I just like seeing money come into their merch account frequently, like every day. I like that. That just works for me. And you know, once again, you know, you might like the launch model because launches are very exhausting. You're pushing, you're pushing, you're presenting, you're uh, doing. If you got joint venture partners, uh, you're appearing on podcasts. If you got a publicist, you're all over the place, and it's just this long grind for thirty, sixty, or ninety days, and it's rough. It's really, really rough. I mean, you can make a lot of money where you can probably, you know, if you do it right, you can make enough money where you can kick back the rest of the year. But that also creates another problem. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So you get used to working like two or three months out of the year and living the whole year. What if your lunch doesn't go correct? And you've got this new habit of not working that much. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a big problem. Uh, let's see, 1996 740 IL, 1600. Is that for the tires or the car? I think that's the car, right? Adrian, Uberman, 2010, Toyota, Honda, being the, we'll get 400K paying you back. Yeah, these are the cars today, they're amazing what you can get out of these vehicles. But, you know, that that's the kind of thing. So when you're looking at certain things, you got to look at from a long term perspective, because even though these computers are expensive, I made so much money off of them that I, I could I would I couldn't complain about the price. And like I said, the only reason I'm not replacing stuff is they do what I need to do. And that's that's another thing. When you're buying instruments or you're buying equipment for your business, you have to look at will it do what you want it to do? Like. All of this fancy stuff that's nice to have, if it's not going to move your profit needle, if you got it and you want to get it and it's not going to hurt you, fine. But if you don't need it and you don't have to buy it, why buy it? You know, it just really depends. I'm um, a little late to the party. What are, how are you doing the beach thing in the background? I just came from a few days ago. It's an app, Lazy J Saloon. Uh, JC, I have a 2000 Audi A4 2.8 with 260,000 miles, and I gave it to my brother, and it's still running. See, that's cool. Well, some examples of offline marketing, meetups, billboards, direct mail. I mean, radio shows, TV shows. You know, if you write a book and you have one of those local, like Atlanta, we got Atlanta today. If I wanted, when I wrote my book, if I wanted to go in there, I could have. It's just I didn't want to be typecast forever as a storage auction guy. So I didn't do it. But one, yeah, there's so many ways. Uh, service based hustles geared toward corporate clients? No. If you're in that dollar hustle world, you want to sell B to C, which is business to customer. You do not want to be, so you sell a corporate, you're going to have maybe a net 30. Or, you know, unless you can get cash immediately, 
Because if you go on corporate and you do like uh, invoices where you have to wait 30, 45 days to get paid, that's worse than having a job sometimes until you get to a point where the invoices are coming in and you're not having those dry periods. No, service-based hustles towards clients who will pay you in cash as soon as you're done. That's what you want. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book's worth it. It talks about what you said. Don't worry about price. If it's quality, it will pay you back in the long run. If it's, all right, let, let's, let's just talk, you know, let's just say that everything on this table costs me 50 grand, right? 50 grand. It doesn't, but let's just say it. I can write off half of that the year that I buy it, or I can depreciate it over five years or 20%. So they really didn't cost me 10 grand. They really were free. See, that that's the whole thing that when you start factoring that into it versus just looking at, oh my God, it's so expensive. Those people who put Apple products are fucking fools versus you got a budget that you got to spend and you go out and buy some computers that make you money and you get a tax benefit at the same time. That doesn't sound foolish to me. Yeah, I mean, if you're buying this stuff for money because you ever notice how all the construction guys have the walk tools and they're not cheap or they will have, um, you know, it's been, a while, it's been a while since I've been on the construction site, but I just noticed that, that certain professionals have certain things. And when I get on YouTube, all the big people had, and to this day, still have Max to do their video processing, and most use Canon cameras. A lot use Nikon, but most still use Canon or the GoPro. But it's just interesting how you consistently see the people who are making the most money using the same equipment. I wonder why that is the case. I wonder. So, anybody got any question about uh, that slow dollar? The fast dollar, that slow 100, because I've got some customers, I know them by name because they bought so much stuff. And I think there's at least, there's more than a dozen for over the 20 grand mark. So you can't do that with the fast dollar move, you know, unless you just get a lot of stuff and you'll flip it really fast. All right, so just for you folks who are here, just for a few more hours, that deal is going to be in effect. It's below the video. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. You know, I'm going to hang out for another question. And then with that, I am going to bounce because it's been my power Monday. Two workouts, three hangouts, six phone calls. It's been an interesting day. All right, looks like you guys are good. All right, so just want to say thanks to everybody that came out for the Google Hangout. There will be more, much more. So be sure to share this video, like, subscribe, and leave a comment after it renders.